Welcome back to DXB Today. Our next guest is absolutely no stranger to the DXB Today team. She joined us last season to talk about her edgy buyer line. Now she is back this time though, as the owner of the newest women's football club in the UAE, Banat FC. Welcome, Vidrea. How are you? Welcome Thank back, you. I should say, on our hundredth episode yeah, as well. It's quite very fitting uh, that you're back. Um, so, fashion. Mm -hmm. Now owning a football team. <laughs> Tell me more. Well, there's a lot in between that <laughs> okay. maybe we skipped. So, I actually started my fashion career at the same time as my sports marketing career. So, in 2009, when I started my fashion label, was uh, when I got my first job, I think it was, oh, Formula One, <laughs> I think it was, yes. So I worked at Formula One and from there started my, my uh, sports marketing journey. From there I went on to the sports council. From the sports council, I was the marketing director at the, um, the UAE Pro League, so the men's league, and then commercial director at a football club, Al Ahli Club. So I worked in sports across all different uh, organizations and, and, and got to see it from every angle I could. And then I started my own uh, consultancy called Ghost Concept, mm -hmm. where we are Arab sports culture and marketing consultants. And we represented athletes, as, as oh. Fadi knows very well, uh, managed athletes. We're the first and only ones in the region to actually offer uh, athlete brand development as a service and to take care of athletes and um, kind of get them to learn their value uh, on and yeah. off the pitch um, mm -hmm. and how to maximize on any opportunity that comes their way, how to create real loyalty with their fan base. So we started with that and then um, with my experience in football marketing through the league, I got the attention of brands like uh, Nike uh, and later on Adidas to create campaigns. Um, since I have that insight and understand the nuances of the Arab football uh, mm -hmm. scene, so I did a lot of creative work within football, uh, rebranding clubs, creating documentaries for FIFA, and um, recently did a bunch of things with Adidas and then decided now it's time <laughs> it for Women's time. Football. <laughs> so wait, tell us about Bennett FC. I mean, we want to know, is it, is, it, uh, is it for professional players? What are you, what is the ultimate mission? What are you working on at the moment? Give us the, give us the scoop. So, uh, Benat FC is the first club in the top level league in the UAE with an Arabic name. So that was something I was very passionate about uh, when I was looking at women's football here. And, and that was kind of what sparked the idea to create a women's football club. I looked at the names of all the clubs that were participating and none of them had Arab names. Mm -hmm. And I thought instead of, you know, complain and huff and puff and just being annoyed by what's going on in the industry or, or lack of attention and representation. You're like, yalla, ya Yeah, eggs. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I called some friends who are footballers and asked them, you know, what they thought and what does it take to actually start a club. And, and I made it happen. And, and the intention behind it is to uh, create a platform that really represents uh, Arab athletes, um, and, and the name Banat is a name that uh, is, you know, resonates with any Arab girl. Mm -hmm. So it's not specifically Emirati. It's from here to Morocco. Girls everywhere will understand what we're about very easily. Mm -hmm. Some people may find the name a little basic, but then they don't understand the mission behind it. That it is uh, literally uniting girls from everywhere. And our, our hashtag is Yalla Banat. Literally what you oh, just, I said. just said. That. Yalla Banat. I mean, I connected it with it immediately. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Absolutely, there you go. Is an Egyptian and, uh, and, uh, my, my question is a little bit technical. You managed athletes, mm -hmm. you worked with them as marketing, and, and then now you're the president of the club. Yes. So it's, it's totally different because you used to be with the athletes going in a, in a different direction, sure. not against the club, but towards the athlete yeah. uh, uh, it was, it was about side. Them putting now, them first. You're the president of the club, and you know that there is managers gonna be working with them, you know. Yeah. So what's? Oh, I know. Where are you now? <laughs> She's and, the uh, boss. boss yeah, no, yeah, but but in the same time, she works she worked as a manager. Mm. So there is a conflict here. Would, How you will be able to manage this? I wouldn't call it a conflict. I think, I, I would bring the best of both worlds because I know how to you know, develop athletes, create value, put them first. Um, I, I bring that to this team. So I'm not only looking at it as, um, as a, like, I, I don't only need my team to succeed in the sport. I need all the players, all the girls to succeed in all other aspects of their lives too. And, and I, 
I, I think that's incredibly important. And there is, the conflict here is, um, for example, you would imagine the more technical staff saying, you know, football comes first. Where for me, for example, just yesterday I was having a conversation was, give me everyone's grades for all the girls that are in school and anyone who's got a below C average is off the team until they fix their grades, for Whoa. example. So it's very important yeah. because I know the, about the struggle and how clubs can take advantage of athletes. I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen and to build something properly this that is, takes care of them. That's exactly what I want to ask. Yeah. 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 I mean, point. we're really going in the right direction, though. The Women's World Cup, really, I feel like, I mean, the statistics are really behind it. The yeah, people absolutely. that tuned in to watch. Tell me specifically for Dubai and the UAE, which direction we think we're going in when it comes to women's football. Well, uh, considering our league is still, unfortunately, uh, at an amateur level, um, I'm hoping that with Benat FC, we bring enough attention to the sport that we make other people maybe a little bit envious of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not envious of exactly what it is, it's just how easy it is. It's simple. More people should get into this side of football and, and do what they can to promote women's football. And if other people see this and think, wait, if it's only going to take so-and-so to start a football club for women, let me do so. Because eventually it's also going to be a very smart commercial mm. you know, business. Exactly. Um, down the line once the country or region is a bit more ready mm -hmm. uh, well the region is if you look at Saudi but for the UAE um, so I'm hoping that this inspires other people to, to start clubs that aren't academies and I say that well, with all respect to academies but academies girls pay to play in yeah. academies and that needs to change um, but currently if you don't have a pro league and you don't have pro contracts you can't you can't expect things to change. So exactly. we, we need to make sure that things move forward to put the girls first so they don't have to actually pay to play in the league. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so hopefully within a couple of years, the league will be so as close to pro as possible. Thank good luck. you so much, Badr. You've been amazing. As, and, and all of us have liked to Bennett FC. Thank you we so need to much. be in the, in, the, in the crowds cheering yeah. them on. We'll yeah. invite yeah. you all to our first game and we <laughs> hope to see you all there amazing. in our jerseys. We all promise. Right. Right. Now over to today's spotlight, which is a, a former Lebanese professional tennis player who chose to live and set up his very own tennis club in Dubai. Let's find out more about him. My name is Patrick Shukri. I'm the founder and CEO of Touch Tennis Sports Club. Touch Tennis Sports Club is the first only touch tennis club in the world. It was born in Dubai and our aim is to popularize the sport and open clubs, multiple clubs in the UAE and the region. You know, following your passion is, is something that everybody strives for. I was uh, lucky enough to know what my passion was, being an ex-professional tennis player. I had already ticked that box, which was tennis. I studied multiple projects around tennis until I was introduced to touch tennis and saw the potential it had. Um, so basically I, I worked on a business plan, I, uh, I raised the funds uh, and I was able to eventually open the club and that's a huge milestone for me. Opening the club was a huge challenge because we took uh, four old warehouses and we combined them together, so we had to take down the walls, uh, etc. The construction took about a year. Getting the right permits in place uh, was very challenging, but we got it done. And now we're up and running. We opened in January 2023, and I'm, I'm very happy about that. The fact that it's a multicultural city, the fact that it's extremely safe, the fact that you can you can achieve your dreams. I'll spend time with my family. We'll go to the beach if the weather uh, is right. Um, and then have a, nice, uh, have a nice dinner with my wife and friends. Yeah, yeah, another example of a world-class athlete. Uh, obviously, applying his trade the world over during his professional career and now bringing those skills 
uh, to the UAE, to Dubai specifically as well. He is not alone. And uh, we understand that we are going to see many, many more athletes making this their home or certainly their second home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, now it is time for the roundup on DXB today. And this one's a first in the world of sport, believe it or not. Dubai Sports Council, the UAE's first electric scooter race has been announced. Um, it's happening on the 16th of December. I have a question for you all. Is it a sport? Electric scooting? Fadi, what do we think? Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm... I'm uh... I'm close to the Vice Sports Council, so I don't want to call it <laughs> yeah. no. But it's it's good to have it, yeah. you know. Um, I don't think it's sports, mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes Fancy, to electric. why not? Then, if you uh, can race cars, you can race scooters. Plus, have you seen how people drive their scooters here in the UAE? They definitely treat it like you, a sport. Uh, let me tell you, race cars <laughs> is completely different. You know how many hours they put in, you know, So what racing. makes you think they don't do the same with their scooters? Do you know how long? I have a scooter, yeah. an electric scooter. I like to ride that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. How, <laughs> For many hours. How many calories do you burn? Um, day, yeah? I mean, how many calories do you, I guess you do burn quite a bit racing a car, right? Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and heavy training behind yeah. that. You know what? Well. You do have to balance. You do. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how they're riding those electric scooters. These are not slow. They're Listen, I want to watch that race. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. About so, that. so they can yeah, get up to, to speed. Experience you know, that. the only thing I would say, I'm, I'm sort of agreeing with you, Fadi, to a certain degree, is, is that it's a first. Yeah. And Dubai is very good at firsts, yeah. you know? Yeah. Nowhere else in the world is doing something yeah. like this. It's the first time it's ever going to be here. Yeah. And I think that's what Dubai does really well. Exactly. It races things right at the beginning. Yeah. So kudos to Dubai Sports Council for taking this on. Who knows? Yeah. As Dina was saying there, maybe this is the next Formula One. Come on, do you not want to go watch that? People will be swerving in front of each other, tipping over. Like, I don't want anyone to get hurt, obviously. Exactly. But exactly. it's, it's going to no, be entertaining. No, it's fun to watch. Yeah, Definitely. it's going to be entertaining. I think it's a time for grown adults to finally become like professional sportsmen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that this is their in. That's their, that's their moment. <laughs> you know what? I don't like to run, so I can't ever imagine myself being an, an athlete like yourself. But electric scooters? You never just have know. a future for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what else is coming up after the break. Yes, indeed. We're going to speak to an incredible woman who's championing inclusivity across all sports. And uh, speaking of incredible women, our very own Katie Overy has met and played basketball with some of the NBA's top players. We will be right back. <laughs>